morning all. All right, so, I mean, the preview video was first thing today, but for me, this is my first video of the morning. All right, so uh, there are some point streaks in the National Hockey League. Let's get to discussing these on a Saturday. Um, and yes, these are new reverse retro jerseys I have. Uh, so 14 game point streak for Jason Robertson. Uh, Robertson's been absolutely fantastic. He leads the league in scoring during the month of November, 24 points in 12 games. And he's closing in on McDavid. I don't expect him to end up being the Art Ross winner this year, but Robertson's been just fantastic. He's all over the ice. And uh, yeah, he is, I, I think part of the reason why Pavelski's point totals have been so good. And yeah, I mean, it's a it's a win-win there, right? The interesting thing is that while he leads the league in scoring for the month of November with 24 points in those 12 games, Jamie Benn is right behind him and is second in the league in scoring with 21 points in 12 games. So for Dallas, uh, while sometimes keeping the puck out of their net has been a bit of a challenge for them, scoring has not been, which I thought when they hired Peter DeBoer was probably what they were thinking. And so far, if that's what they were thinking, it's worked out pretty well. Also, when we talk about point streaks, Marner has a point streak on the line as well as they go into their game against Pittsburgh. 15 games for Marner. So while he's not scoring at the same rate as Robertson, he is very reliable. And their defense is pretty good too, even though all their defensemen are out. I'm suddenly seeing people talking about Justin Hall. Like, wait, he, there's no five five on five goals when he's on the ice against the Maple Leafs. Yeah, <clears throat> one thing that I've noticed over the years is that the defensemen, I think, take more criticism than they should uh, when things aren't going great, uh, and they don't get as much credit as they should when things are going well. That happens with goaltenders too, on some level. But it feels like with defensemen, especially once a uh, fan base or just whatever you know, group online decide we don't like this player. Nothing that player does is ever going to turn things around. So I think Toronto's defense has done a good job of uh, proving that they're better than people think uh, against pretty good teams. They're still winning. And I mean, are they losing here and there too? Sure. But Toronto is still in pretty good shape to make the playoffs and going through all these injuries. Who knows? Maybe it'll lead to a nice playoff run too. I know there are people who will snicker at, the, at that, but uh, there are teams who have proven fan bases and, and just the NHL fans in general wrong before. Uh, looking at the Colorado Avalanche is an example of that from all the way back in the Detroit Red Wings. Eventually won a couple of cups and then they won a couple of more. All right. Uh, the Boston Bruins, of course, set a record yesterday in the National Hockey League with their 12th straight home win to start the season. Uh, it's it's a ridiculous record. I was very surprised they came back against Carolina. The Canes are on a five-game losing streak. Uh, four of those in overtime, so they've only lost one in regulation. But uh, I think what it showed is Boston is, has got that fight back. They've shown that all year. And that Carolina has trouble closing out games. They've shown that through a lot of the year, too. So that game was really a microcosm of how the season's gone for both of them. <clears throat> for Boston, of course... Uh, the, the, the plan would be to continue to win all 41 home games and go from there. I don't think they get there, but at this point, they're on pace to win all 41 home games. Uh, the Jets have decided they're they're going to ask the league for some explaining about the tying goal yesterday. So the, the goal that was counted uh, against Hellebuck, with Hellebuck down and out and minus his helmet, uh, I do understand why they would want an explanation. Uh, if it's for goaltender interference, fine, but the fact there was no whistle is surprising. And I'm still kind of surprised uh, at that decision, so I'd be interested to know if we'll hear from the league why that goal counted as opposed to other times that, you know, a, a, a goaltender has their, their helmet strap come loose and the whistle goes right away. That kind of thing, right? <clears throat> so I would think that a goaltender being hurt and down on the ice is more extreme than a guy just you know, losing a strap off of his helmet. And I'd, I'd be interested to hear if the NHL is going to say, well, this is how it should be called, meaning that referees blowing the whistle every time that a guy's helmet comes loose, and I'm talking about the goaltender, um, that they, they blow the whistle. Maybe that's the wrong move, and maybe we'll stop seeing that, which, of course, wouldn't make fans very happy. I think we can all agree that it is in the best interest of the league to protect their stars and protect their goaltenders, <clears throat> and uh, they, they don't always do a great job of that, right? Uh, one thing that happened yesterday, too, lost in the midst of all this. Blake Wheeler played his 844th game as a part of the organization. Uh, nicely, in the graphic discussing this and announcing it, they showed uh, him in his Jets jersey next to a picture of him in his Thrasher's jersey. 
acknowledging that this is the franchise record, including his time in Atlanta. So, yeah, for Blake Wheeler, he's been there for a long time. I'm kind of surprised he's still there. But he's played well enough this year that I, I think he, he stays the rest of the season. I'd be actually kind of surprised if Winnipeg made a big move because they're not that far out of first place in the Central. And so as long as you're playing well enough to be in the conversation for first place, you don't want any bit more, you don't want to make a, a big move just for the sake of making one, uh, which could throw off the chemistry of your team. Uh, last night was kind of interesting too in that Kirby Doc gets the shootout winner in Chicago. I am still baffled at Chicago deciding to move on from Kirby Doc. He's on a very reasonable contract with Montreal. He's playing quite well. He's up around a point per game right now. And I, I still don't understand. And I say that because I understand that Chicago's in a rebuild, but Doc is very young. And so the idea that, well, you know, by the time Chicago is really good, Doc could be, you know, 50. I, I don't think that's a thing. But uh, Doc has done a good job. In, for the Montreal Canadiens thus far, he's playing on the top line and, and really, honestly, has looked quite good out there. I know he had a couple of down years in Chicago, but he's a, he's a big kid and he's young. He knew he was going to eventually have that bounce back, right? Uh, so for the Pittsburgh Penguins, they go into tonight's game against the Toronto Maple Leafs on a five-game winning streak. Uh, another very streaky team. And I, I know I talk about this a lot, but this, the, the extreme streaks in the NHL we're having feels like we're seeing more and more five game plus winless streaks five game plus winning streaks and this season is just the the momentum swings for teams it's been ridiculous and so for Pittsburgh right now they're playing quite well we'll see how things work for them against Toronto uh, but they had what the seven game losing streak now they're on a five game winning streak sure why not uh, for Seattle <clears throat> a team that I think everybody has underrated for a while and I think there are some that are still underrating Seattle uh, they are now six points behind Vegas for first in the Pacific, which also I'm pretty sure would be first in the West. Uh, they they have also have two games in hand on Vegas. So they've played two less games than the Vegas Golden Knights. And Seattle is making some noise. They absolutely could end up being a team uh, that, that pushes for the division. I mean, this is just crazy, right? Uh, Seattle was not expected to be in the playoffs. And, and I went as far as to be crazy enough to say, Maybe they end up with 82 points and they'll be better than last year. And I people say, are you crazy? Look at this roster. This roster sucks. And here we are. Who knew that the solution was to add Martin Jones in net and uh, just stop allowing shots against. It sounds so simple, but Seattle's doing it quite well. They've just seemingly decided, hey, if we're going to win these games, we've got to cut down on chances against. And it's it's made it so that their games have a lot less... Uh, of those crazy moments that you see in a lot of games, but it's working for them. So it's been quite entertaining to watch. And last night, watching what they did in Las Vegas, holding the Golden Knights to six shots in the third period. Well, I'm afraid of what Vegas might do in the third period tonight against Vancouver, because the third period's kind of their jam. Uh, I, I have to say that was very impressive by Seattle to go in there and shut them down in the third period. That just generally doesn't happen to the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, one interesting thing, too, and I've, I've mentioned this recently, uh, and the NHL website had their 14 writers vote, and their vote had Lindy Ruff winning the Jack Adams Award for Coach of the Year. I, I find it interesting, and I, I think this is an argument for there are times where we say that coach needs to go. Clearly, that coach needs to go. Lindy Ruff wasn't fired. The, the assistant coaches behind him changed, and now all of a sudden they're really good. So for anybody who wants to say, well, it's not rough, it's the assistant coaches, then it wasn't rough that was the reason they were bad last year either. And that's the thing. That's the, the two sides of that argument. Is the head coach being proven to be not as effective because they changed assistant coaches? No. Uh, so I, I do think, and again, I talked about how defensemen, I think, take too much blame. I think there's times that the coaches take too much blame. There's only so much you can do. These are guys who are getting paid millions of dollars to play hockey. They are some of the best athletes on the planet. And if they can't get motivated to go out there and, and win games and play well in front of 15 plus thousand people, um, I, I, you know, I understand coaches kind of going, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to do this after going through every tactic they have to turn a player around uh, to watch them still go out and meander and not play very well or as a team, the team's not playing well. So, yeah, I think Lindy Ruff needs to be acknowledged a bit here as, as a pretty good coach. 
I remember when he was in Dallas and got fired, I made a video on how I didn't feel it was Lindy Ruff's fault. And I still stand behind that. I still thought Lindy was a pretty good coach in Dallas. I didn't think he was. it was his fault. Uh, they haven't won a cup since he left either. So, you know, there's that. Although Bonus did take him to the Stanley Cup final. Um, but yeah, so there we are. And of course, now they've got Peter DeBoer and they're doing really well again. Uh, so the question then becomes one of, do coaches not get enough credit? Do they get too much blame? Same line as defensemen. Uh, or are coaches in general overrated? And I've seen that argument too of, well, you know, these are pro athletes and really... Whoever's behind the bench doesn't matter. It's usually an argument made when a really good team wins the Stanley Cup is, well, that coach, he didn't really have to do anything. Look at his lineup. I heard that about the Red Wings. I heard that about Scotty Bowman a lot. Like, well, yeah, Scotty Bowman has a lot of Stanley Cups, but look at the teams he's coached. Anybody could have done that. When nobody else ever has. That's the thing. When people say, well, anybody could do that. Well, nobody else does. Oh, look at New Jersey's winning streak. 13 games. Well, anybody could do that with that schedule. Then why don't they? So there's that argument too. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.